video I want to talk about beds and build platforms and particularly how to get them level. On my particular machine I don't use any form of um, firmware or software to compensate for flatness or level, it's all done mechanically. It isn't difficult to do because a lot of people think it is, a lot of people think it's expensive but it isn't so I'm going to go through that. If you're thinking of building a machine, or you are building a machine, or you're modifying one, or you're thinking about modifying one, then hopefully you'll find something useful in this video. Even if you've got a machine and you're currently using automatic bed levelling, you might be doing it wrong. So you might still glean something useful uh, from this video. Anyway, as a quick demo, it's um, a couple of clips from a, a, a video I made many years ago when I first built my machine, just to show that you can print pretty much edge to edge without any firmware compensation. first printer was a, uh, a Rip Ruck Mendel that I built from a kit. Um, it was by Adrian Bowers company, Rip Ruck Pro. And um, that had a very flimsy bed um, and it was necessary to probe the bed and do firmware flatness co uh, compensation before every print. The Core XY that I've got down in my garage, um, I built that with uh, in, in such a way that the bed is inherently flat and it's level and it stays that way. I can and have done um, take that printer apart, put it in the back of a van, transport it 50 miles, set it up at a show, um, put it back together and start printing without doing any bed leveling, um, without even checking it. It's good. Having used um, both a machine that you need to check the level every time you're going to do a print and having used one that you never have to do it uh, trust me if you never have to do it it makes life so much easier so much easier I don't want to make this video too long um, there's been all sorts of discussion on all sorts of various forums about the optimum number of lead screws and where they should be positioned and so forth I just go over that very quickly so this is a representation of a, um, a build plate uh, with a single screw in the middle and so it's fairly obvious that um, that's not going to work well, that single attachment point because the bed is free to tilt left to right or front to back. So we know we need more than one attachment point or more than one support. So you could have two like this for example, but that's not going to work well because uh, the bed is still free to tilt in one direction it's only supported at either side. So then we come to three attachment points. A point in space is simply a point in space. Two points in space defines a line, that you can draw a line between two points. Three points in space, if you draw a line between them and then shade in that area uh, it gives you a plane, which is what we want with our bed plate. We want a flat level plane. So three points looks like this. And it doesn't matter which of the three points you raise or lower, the entire build platform in our case will remain flat. You can change the level, but it will always be flat. So if you had four attachment points, if those points are unconstrained, then you can have the situation where the build platform would rock like the four-legged table on an uneven floor. 
It's a bit like a three-legged stool versus a four-legged stool. A uh, three-legged stool will never uh, rock if the floor is uneven. Um, it will always be flat, shall we say. Um, whereas a four-legged table, we're probably also at restaurants where if somebody leads on the table and it rocks um, and you end up sticking a beer mat underneath a leg to get that uh, correct. If you constrain those four points so they're fixed top and bottom, and then you adjust the length of one of them rather than tilting the bed you distort it so it can look like this and of course the same applies if you have any more than four points so one point isn't enough neither is two three is the optimum number of attachment points where you can adjust any one and it will change the level of that plane but it will still remain a plane which is why in I believe um, three lead screws are best obviously we need something that's going to be flat as well as level one of the best options is aluminium tooling plate because it's relatively cheap if you buy tooling plate it's um, machined or cast it's guaranteed to be uh, pretty flat Aluminium is also a good thermal conductor, um, so if you attach your heater to the aluminium, the heat will conduct quite evenly through across the surface, which is what we want. Obviously, we can't print directly onto the aluminium, or if we did, we run the risk of damaging the aluminium, um, which would be expensive to replace. So, we generally use some sort of surface. Um, my preference is to use. Uh, glass, float glass, and I use 3D lac, so it, it works for me. I like the idea of having a removable um, build surface because I have a big, a relatively big build platform and it's quite thick, it takes forever to cool down. So by being able to slide out one piece of glass and then slide another one in, I'm able to start another print pretty much straight away. Um, I'm not going to get into the, all the different build surfaces and something. Um, everybody has their own preference. Obviously, just suffice to say that we've got to start with something that's uh, flat, and then we've got to support it, ideally in three points. So, assuming we've got three lead screws, which I believe to be the optimum, it's then a question of how do we uh, how do we drive those screws? You've got two choices: you can use a single motor and a continuous belt to drive all three, or you can use individual motors. To drive each one independently. The issue with using multiple motors is that they, whenever you cycle the power, they will jump to the nearest step, but actually it's a bit more complicated than that. It's something like four steps. I'm not an expert on stepper motors by any means, but um, it's something to do with the fact that they have a bipolar stepper motor, has two coils. And to get one step, you put current through one set of coils. To get the next step, you reverse the direction of the current. To get the third step, you put current through the second pair of coils. And to reverse that, you um, to get the fourth step, you reverse the direction of the current. So when you first power up the printer, um, motors can move to any one of four whole step positions. So if you have multiple motors, whenever you cycle the power they're going to not be synchronized and that kind of feeds back into a video I made earlier about um, lead screws if you've got those horrible in my mind uh, four star eight mil lead screws four steps difference between each screw could be quite significant so that's not to say that you shouldn't use uh, multiple motors a lot of people choose to do so but it does mean that if you if you have multiple motors then you have to level the bed every time you cycle the power because of this synchronization. I prefer to use a single motor and a continuous belt because I'll never get this getting out of synchronization situation. So I never have to level my bed. I don't have to do it. I just need to hone the printer and the bed is always flat and level. And as I've said before um, I can take the top section off, put both bits in a van, drive it to the NEC, put it back together and start printing without checking the level. It's 
very, very nice to be able to do that. So people have said, well, it's, you know, it's very difficult to do that. How am I going to do it? It costs, it's expensive. We haven't all got buckets of money and we haven't all got rakes of tools and we haven't got lasers and inclinometers and all this stuff and um, you don't need any of it. It's not difficult to do. About the only thing that you really need, and I could probably go away with not having one at all, but what you really need is one of them. This is a, uh, a dial type indicator. So pressing this plunger up and down moves the needle. It's very, very sensitive. So one of those and print an adapter so you can fit it on the gantry in place of your hot end. Really, that's all you need. But of course, as well as the bed being level and flat, it needs to be uh, what we call a tram. That is to say, um, it needs to be level in respect to the rails on the top of the printer, the basically your X and Y axis rails. Because you can have the bed level and flat, but not necessarily parallel with the rails of the printer. So if the frame itself is on the skew, then <coughs> that's going to cause you problems. So in this video I'm going to show not only how to um, get the bed flat and level <coughs> but also to ensure that it is flat and level with respect to the printer frame and if necessary how to square the frame if it's distorted. And you can do all of that with this dial type indicator. So a dial gauge you can pick them up for um, oh, pretty much a, a, or even less than the price of a, a probe such as a, a VL Touch. They're not really expensive and you don't have to go for ultra accuracy. So these things have a ring on the dial so that once the dial is in a position then you can um, you can rotate the whole thing and, and set it to zero. So I'm assuming by now we've got our, um, our flat lump of aluminium with some sort of surface on it and we've attached it to the printer. I'm not really going to get into kinematic mounts and that sort of thing because that's a, that could be a whole video on its own. If you're using um, individual motors and you're going to use those to level the bed then you probably won't have um, any other means of adjusting it or if you did it's going to get complicated. What do you adjust the lead screw or the or the, uh, or the mount. If you do like I do and um, have a single motor and a continuous belt driving all three screws then you need some other uh, means of adjustment to um, to level the bed. What I do in fact is um, I use one screw as a reference here yeah, however you do it if you've got three point leveling one should always be the reference and then you move the other two in respect to that reference. Um, what I do is I slacken off the pulleys that um, connect the belt to the lead screw and then I can just rotate each individual lead screw. That's how I level the bed. I don't have a separate adjustment. It's kind of up to you how you do it. So this is a representation of a printer. The three uh, black cylinders are the lead screws. Think of them as attachment points uh, for the bed. Those are the things we're going to adjust. Um, so it might not necessarily be the lead screws if you've got separate adjusters, but they'll be in those kind of in that triangular uh, position. The bed itself is the uh, that yellow square in the centre, and then the uh, the printer frame of the uh, silver rails around the top. The red rail would be the X carriage, um, X, the X rail, and then the um, which moves front to back in in the y direction, and then the uh, the blue blob in the middle represents the dial gauge that would be uh, that we'd be using. So the temptation then would be to start in this front left corner, position the DTI at that point, raise the bead until um, it's uh, till the needle starts to move, zero the dial at that point, 
and then move across to the next screw on the right and then make the adjustment so that the DTI reads zero again and then finally move to the back and then adjust that rear screw so that it reads zero and then go back to the front right and recheck it's a bit of an iterative process um, but that would actually be wrong because if the frame is twisted then what you've basically done is make the bed level but with reference to a twisted frame so if we have the situation here where the frame is twisted such that that front left corner is low but that's how we've leveled the bed effectively the um the DTR is too low in that corner because the frame is twisted so if we um, if you then position the DTI in the opposite corner that right rear corner then you'll find it's high so we can check those three points and get the bed nice and level but in actual fact if we try to print like that it's not going to work because it's too high and we've never checked that point so a better approach is to position the X rail in the center of the bed and then move the, 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 uh, the DTI to the left and then with that rail in the center of the bed like that then adjust the left hand screw or raise the bed rather and zero the dial and then keeping the rail in the center move the dial across to the right and adjust the right hand front lead screw and then from front to back keep the DTI in the center move it then to the front of the printer uh, make sure it's still zero and then move it to the back and adjust that rear one and then what you've done you've still leveled it but you've done it with reference to the center of the printer rather than using the frame as a reference so having established our three points with reference to the center of the bed now we can go on and check the frame so if we position the DTI now at the front left it should read the same as if it was in the center of the printer at the left and if it doesn't then it's going to be obvious that that corner is low so the thing to do is set the DTI in the center and level it like that as we have done and then with the DTR still being on the left hand side move it from front move the rail the whole X rail from front to back and make sure that both the corners are the same as the center and if they're not adjust those corners as necessary and then we do the same on the right hand side start with the DTI in the center of the bed which is the reference point that we've established when we leveled the bed and then move that X rail all the way to the front and all the way to the back and it should read the same and if it doesn't we need to adjust the frame the corners of the frame so that it always reads the same as it did when we measured across the center of the bed it's quite easily also to tell if any of the frame members are bent um, so the x-rail is a classic one people often think they've got a saddle shaped bed when in fact it's the rail itself that's drooping so with the DTI in the center if you then move it from left to right you should get exactly the same reading at the extremities than you get in the center if both the left and the right are high but the center is low then you know that the rail is bent or it's sagging downwards and the same applies to any of the other axis rails or any of the other frame rails if you get a reading in both corners that are the same but somewhere in the middle it's different then it's pretty obvious that frame member is bowed so although it's not a difficult thing to do um, it is fairly complicated in as much as uh, it's an iterative process and you have to keep going backwards and forwards um, checking and adjusting 
But a thing to bear in mind is you're only going to do this once when you first build the printer or subsequently if you um, do some serious maintenance or drop it or have a serious accident with it or something like that. In terms of the total amount of time you spend leveling the bid, um, this obviously takes a fair while, uh, but thereafter you're never going to do it. Whenever you want to print something all you've got to do is home it, you don't have to check the level. There's a saving in time every time you do a print. I made the video to suit my printer which is a Core XY uh, with a fixed bid in as much as it goes up and down in Z but it doesn't go backwards and forwards. Um, but the principles are, are the same whether you've got a Cartesian with a moving bid or or some other kinematics. Um, the principle of getting the bed level with reference to the centre of the printer and then using that to square the frame. Um, it's the same principle. The, um, the images I used to represent the distorted bed were obviously exaggerated at about a sort of three degree angle, um, which hopefully if you could, if you've got a if you've got a pair of eyes you'll get it better than that even with just a square. But because we've got layer heights of you know 0 0.2, 0 0.3 mil, something like that, then um, 0.1 of a mil um, is critical and it's very difficult to build us to build the frame um, using squares, lasers, inclinometers or whatever. It's very difficult to get the frame that's completely square within those tolerances. Um, so get it as close as you can and then using the that method with the dial type indicator to do the the final adjustment of the frame. And works for me anyway. Another potential advantage is that uh, you don't necessarily need to have a very fancy probe. If you've got the bed flat and level um, you can actually put a switch anywhere on the bed. It doesn't. You don't have to use a probe. Um, I kind of do because it's a, an old habit of mine. Um, I actually use the nozzle as a probe but I don't have to, I could use a switch on the bed itself in a corner if the, if the bed is level and flat. You don't have to probe the center of it, um, you, can, you, can have a, you can position a switch anywhere you like. Anyway, I hope this video has been uh, useful or informative to uh, at least some of you. If you've got this far, you've watched it all the way through, so thank you for that. Um, if you want to see more videos like this as ever, I would much appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Uh, that's all for now. That dial indicator, I call it a DTI. A DTI is something slightly different, but it's the same principle. It's a moving arm uh, and a swinging dial. Um, some people call them dial gauges, some people call them dial indicators, some call them dial type indicators, which is what a DTI is, but it's that kind of thing. Basically a small movement on the plunger will give a quite a big movement on the needle, so it's a quite sensitive piece of equipment. In terms of cost they're about the same as a, a probe, something like a BL touch. You can get a dial type indicator for that kind of money, shop around on eBay or somewhere like that. But having separate adjusting screws would make that easier but because I never do it, it, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I only ever do that once 